Yo guys, how's it going? It's your boy, the Geeky Gangster here, coming to you today with another video. In today's video, we are going to be doing episode 8 of my Getting Ranked series, in which we obviously play my 8th game of my 10 placement matches, in which I show you guys all of my placement matches, and then show you guys my rank at the very end of episode 10. Without further ado, let's just get right into the game. Alrighty boys, so we are now on the map ban. Obviously you can see the maps that we have and my team is voting to ban Skyscraper. I was just about to say Stadium and then the other team voted to vo voted to ban Stadium so it doesn't matter anyways and we're playing on Outback. I, this is our, yeah, this is our first Outback map of this entire series so far. You know, I'm, I'm kind of glad, um, Shoot, I forgot the name of it now, so to say, but. But we, we got in like one of the same apps like over and over again this series though. And it's, um, it's like the one where there's like that balcony and then there's the, um, the downstairs with the laundry room. It's sort of like a house, but it's not really a house. You guys know what I mean, right? Who, hopefully. Uh, so we are have Band, Jackal, Blitz, Cade, and let's see who they ran. I feel like Cade is always a very strange band to me. I never understood the Cade band. Caveira band obviously makes a lot of sense. We have the other three are very, very stereotypical bands. I understand those. I wish we could have gotten the Clash ban instead of Cade, but I didn't vote, I don't think. I was too busy talking, so you can't really complain if you don't vote. It's just like politics, right guys? Make sure you're registered to vote for the midterms elections, so no matter who you're voting for, it's always very important to get your voice heard as an American citizen. Uh. But anyways, guys, I think the first topic I um, sort of really wanted to talk about here was uh, the fact that I sort of self-diagnosed myself with IBS-C. I've been really, really struggling with my ball movements um, within the past, like, few years, especially. I feel like it might have gotten worse. Um... But really all my life I struggled with bowel movements in one way or another and all, like, all of the um, mental stuff that's related with IBS-C just made so much sense when I started researching the symptoms of it. It lined up so much with the experiences that I feel like or that I experienced such as you know like the cord pain and because I always had like sharp pains in like certain areas of my body like right below my heart is one of the areas where I always get like a very very sharp pain. Uh, and some other areas of my stomach as well. And I also get, I, I also, I don't get stomach cramping like every day, but I get stomach cramping maybe like two or three times a month. Like really, 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 really bad stomach cramps when I'm using the restroom. And that's also an IBS thing. And then like none of the other disorders or anything made sense, like celiac disease. Uh, it doesn't make sense because uh, it's typically found in people who didn't go through puberty proper properly and didn't grow fast enough as a person, which I went through puberty really fast and grew a lot. Um, and bone loss is also common in celiac disease, and I haven't experienced that. And then um, lactose intolerance is common within uh, celiac disease, and I I'm not lactose intolerant at all, really. So... Uh, like all the other, all the other like bowel disorders and stuff were sort of like celiac disease to where none of the symptoms made sense to me. Like it, it's just not it hasn't been something I've experienced. So I was like, I, I I knew something was wrong with me. But then I started researching I, uh, IB, uh, IBSC, and then all of those symptoms really did line up with what I've been experiencing throughout the past few years, especially. Um, and yeah, so, and, and I know obviously self-diagnosing isn't really legit, but the thing is with IBS though, it's it's kind of the dis, you know the syndrome if, to do that with you're going to do with anything because it's very very difficult for doctors to diagnose in the first place. Only a small percentage actually get that diagnosis because there's you know there's so many problems with you know 
diagnosing it with a lot of people just don't go to the doctors in general but uh, then you had to you just you just have to do so much rigorous testing you have to get your blood drawn from multiple different diseases before that like celiac disease you have to get tested for it then you had to do a stool s sample and then you had to do you know also all their different tests so and then on top of that if you do get that IVSC diagnosis after going to the doctors for months doing rigorous testing, you know, just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because they make you do all those other tests before you can do the IBS test. Uh, if, even if you get to the diagnosis stage, there is no medicine or cure for IBS-C whatsoever. Uh, and there's only at-home remedies is like the main thing that they're going to recommend anyway, such as dietary changes, getting more fiber in your diet, um, multiple therapy you know things you can do at home such as like a uh, stress relief exercises um you know just lowering your amounts of anxiety throughout the day trying not to have panic attacks at all trying not to think about things uh that were that are going to take place in the future and just multiple psychotherapy uh exercises as well and uh, cognitive behavioral therapy is recommended and you know a whole bunch of different uh, therapeutic things as well because a lot of it is mental like i said with uh, large amounts of anxiety with stress attacks panic attacks uh, a lot of, a lot of people with ibs experience depression as well um obviously anxiety and depression do sort of go together as well I, I feel like it's just that's sort of just natural if you, if you have anxiety all the time and if you're constantly scared uh, just about going through your life, you are eventually going to get depressed. And with IBS as well, it takes away so much of your day um, and it ruins a lot of things for you. So that's depressing in general. And then uh, so many people with uh, irritable bowel syndrome experience being demonized by other people as well because... You get people that are like, oh, what's taking you so long? Oh, like, why are you like this? What, like, what's happening? What's wrong with you? And it, it very quickly becomes noticeable that there's something wrong with you because uh, you might be holding up other time, people's times as well in one way or another and disrupting other people's day as well with IBS uh, because you, you, you're just in the bathroom for so long, for long periods of times. Um, so it's very easy for people with IBS to become demonized a lot because people just don't understand the syndrome at all. And I knew there was someone right there in the, in the game, but oh uh, no, don't, don't kill me, don't kill me, no. Um, but yeah, I was I was saying, you just become demonized because people wonder why you're like that, why it's taking you so long, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, you know. Uh, in the workplace it becomes a really big deal. You can't really make bowel movements in the workplace like most people. Um, you you typically get like panic attacks before events, and so if you're if you're piling all of that sort of stuff onto that, depression is pretty that you know it's, you know depression makes a lot of sense for someone going through all of those other you know mental things as well. <laughs> it just it makes sense to add up to that if you put it out mathematically like that uh but for me personally i used to deal with it a lot more uh like the, the whole depression thing nowadays you know i feel um i don't know it's definitely not as bad as i it has it used to been just with depression because of spirit i guess i discovered spirituality and I've done a lot of things to cope with just depression. Um, I feel like sometimes work, like having bad work experiences, can flare up the the uh, depression and stuff. But typically, especially like. Typically, I don't experience it as bad as I used to, and I, I don't know, it's just not that major of a concern to me anymore, but for a lot of people it is, though. So, hey guys, so that's been sort of the major change in my life as of recently. I've been researching IBS and sort of 
trying trying to learn how I can have better bowel movements and make um stop having the mental issues that come along with the syndrome along with you know the sharp sharp pains in my stomach and stuff like that so it's kind, of, it's kind of interesting I guess and it, it it's sort of a relief that I know that what I'm experiencing does line up with the syndrome even though I'm not you know actually diagnosed by a doctor there is major relief to that to know like what I am experiencing does have a name I mean if I, you know you want to say that I have IBS because I haven't been diagnosed by a doctor but I can say that I have IBS symptoms and that just means that I can put a name on what I'm experiencing and that means that other people have experienced what I'm experiencing I'm not fighting alone and it, just to, just to know that your enemy has a name is very very relieving within itself um and I don't know if you guys have really experienced that or not, but just just have a real enemy in life that's invisible for a long time, but then you finally learn the name of it, or whatever, and you, fi you finally begin to understand it, and I feel like that's a big part of uh, the coping process that a, a lot of people, like, sort of underestimate, you know? Like for instance, if, if 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 you're told like um, if if you're told someone's talking crap about you, and at school or whatever, that's a lot worse than if you're told Billy Bob is talking crap about you. Because at least then you know that your enemy is Billy Bob, that you have beef with Billy Bob, and maybe you can come to a resolution with Billy Bob, and you can talk to him. I uh, you know you gotta do what you gotta do. But if you just know that somebody has been spreading rumors about you and you don't know who it is you don't know who it might be you don't want to accuse anybody of it you think uh anytime that you get close to thinking that it might be somebody you think that you're actually crazy and that you're mean to that person for blaming them when in reality you don't know 100 percent if it's them or not but you're still questioning them so you feel very guilty over that and then it sort of leads to other problems as well and it, it's it, yeah, it's just so much worse than knowing that it's Billy Bob who's spreading the rumors, you know? So I, I, hope, I hope that can sort of help make uh, sense for you guys. I don't, I, don't, I don't want to sound egotistical or anything because it's not just because I, you know, I've been researching it. I felt this way for a while, but no normal people on this earth will ever become legends. You know, it's only not normal people who will ever be remembered in life, so, or in earth history. And if you, if you look at anybody who you look up to, who, anyone who is a role model to you, anyone who inspires you, there's probably something severely wrong with it, with that person. Like they probably have very like rare, unique, and severe mental issues. Um, you know, rather that be a personality disorder or um, like just a mental disorder or a syndrome or something like that. Um, so, a couple examples I, I can give to you guys right off the bat is I was watching this podcast with Markiplier. If you guys watch Markiplier, you know he's always very calm. He talks with a very uh, soothing voice. A lot of people describe talking to Markiplier and listening to Markiplier as being therapeutic for them. Just because he's so, like, soothing of the mind and he's just a very, um... 
calming person to talk to. But that's not always been the case. He actually grew up with severe anger issues to where uh, he said that on his way to and from work, he would constantly I'll punch the steering wheel out mouth. of in his car out of pure anger, and he would punch multiple other things as well. Uh, he, he said that he never harmed another human being and never punched another human being, but he always just felt severe levels of anger all throughout uh, his life growing up. Uh, until he was like a young adult and started, you know, like focusing on that and doing multiple things to sort of reverse that. And it's gotten better now, but he said that he had like severe personality issues. And this is like the calmest, most nicest, like I said, soothing and therapeutic person on YouTube. 36, I think like 36 million subscribers, I think. And so you, you see this person who's soothing and therapeutic and he grew up with severe anger issues. And so, you know, it's, it's so ironic that he had like that issue. And a lot of times it's like that too. Another example would be both Albert Einstein and Elon Musk and many other scientists in world history have all had autism, you know? Uh, Elon Musk has Asperger's Syndrome, uh, Albert Einstein had ASD and didn't speak until he was four years old. Both of those people were labeled as retarded growing up. You know, the mentally retarded societal rejects. Uh, who would probably never amount to anything, and now they're the smartest people on Earth, so... Or in, in the history of the Earth, obviously, because Albert Einstein is a historical figure. So that's pretty interesting. Roman Atwood... I was also watching a pad podcast stuff recently, and... You know, R Roman Atwood is another guy who seems very, very nice. He has the, fam the family vlogging channel, that's what, you know, he really started that genre of family vlogging the biggest vlogger at the time uh, and it's just a very very kind gentle nice uh, father figure he has a clothing brand literally called smile more uh, and he focuses on trying to help people smile more and brighten people's day and just make them happier overall individuals throughout their lives <laughs> but he also has you know like but he goes on to talk about like when his mother died, he just all of a sudden started going to the LDS church and felt it like natural in his head. And like voices in his head said that going to the LDS church was the right thing to do. And so he just naturally started going to church with Brittany at like every single Sunday religiously. And it, it helped him a lot. And so he had like these severe mental issues that, you know, going, that he had to go to church every single Sunday to help him cope with. And this is, like, the, the nicest guy in the U.S. Literally has an entire brand called Smile More, in which he uh, tries to help people focus on becoming happier human beings themselves. <laughs> and he had these mental issues uh, throughout his life. So... It's just so funny how that works, how, like, every single legend that you know literally has mental, like, mental issues, pretty much. Whether that's ASD, IBS, um, you know, uh, just other mental disorders as well are pretty common amongst legends. But very, very, very few so-called normal people ever really become famous. And that's the thing about normalcy is... Uh, people sort of picture the word normal with good when that's not really true. Normal just means middle. You are average. You are an average human being. It's right in the middle and, you know, that's it. You're normal. So people think of that as a good thing usually because that means that you're not, you know, uh, below society you're not a societal reject you're not mentally retarded you're not of the struggling class you're not a peasant anything like that but but everyone who's ever been remembered throughout world history has not been normal either they're they're literally the definition of not normal 
and they're above society. They're the geniuses of the world. They're the uh, innovators, the inventors, uh, the storytellers, the artists. Uh, every fa literally every single famous person you know is not a normal person. And so that's, uh, it's just a pretty cool realization that I had recently. But anyways, guys, I sucked it up during that game. I did absolutely horrible. I went 1-5, and five and uh, we almost got swept. We ended up winning one round of that ranked match. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, please hit the like button down below. Uh, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.